Without a doubt, we can all recall where we were 10 years ago. Without a doubt, the events of September 11th, 2001 are etched in our memory, burned on our brain. Without a doubt, we experienced a paradigm shifting moment for our country and for our world. 10 years ago, commercial airliners hijacked and used as weapons crashed into the two towers of the World Trade Center in New York, crashed into the Pentagon, and crashed in a field in Shanksville, Virginia, that last plane bound for Washington, D.C. Thousands of people from all over the world died that day in our country. God, have mercy. God, have grace. We remember those tense morning hours 10 years ago so vividly. We remember the astonishment, the disbelief, and the fear visceral to this very day. We remember with the fragile reality of this moment ever before us, turning our hearts toward God. God have mercy. God have grace. Let us pray. God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of each of our hearts be found acceptable in your sight. For you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. We remember those tense morning hours 10 years ago so vividly. We remember the astonishment, the disbelief, and the fear, visceral to this very day, its primeval power overtaking us, even to this day. People will commemorate this day in a myriad ways, some befitting, some, unfortunately, not. God have mercy, God have grace. But you have chosen to commemorate this day by being here. You have chosen, you could have chosen, to be a million different places today. Or you could have just chosen to stay home, to avoid whatever would be said and done in this space this morning. But you did not. You have chosen to come here to the house of the Lord to live out verse 5 of our psalm this morning. Happy are those whose help is in the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord our God. You have chosen to come and listen for a good word. Here, suspended between memory and hope, you have chosen to come to the house of God. And so we come this morning in all the fragile reality of this moment in tow, praying God have mercy, God have grace. We come seeking peace with prayers for the past, we pray for those who lost their lives and those who continue to mourn. We pray for those who suffered and those who continue to suffer. In our ever-present grief, rooted in public wounds and yet in a private pain, we come asking God, have mercy. God, have grace. And yet, and yet this morning, we come not only shrouded in a decade-old grief, this morning we also come seeking guidance with prayers for the future, but also for 
with prayers for our present moment. We pray that we may respond in faith to the world around us. This morning we come with penitent hearts, knowing that in these 10 years we have not always put our trust in God. We have failed to heed the warning of the psalmist's words, do not put your trust in princes, in mortals where there is no help. Their plans perish. Too often in these past 10 years, in our post-traumatic stress-filled America, too often we have put our trust in princes and in the principalities of this world. Maybe our patriotism will save us. Maybe our wars will save us. Maybe our national security will save us. Maybe an upturned market will save us. Maybe a bailout will save us. Maybe our lawmakers will save us. Maybe our president will save us. Oh, maybe, 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 friends, maybe. But probably not. Do not put your trust in princes, in mortals where there is no help. Their plans perish. God have mercy. God, have grace. September 11th changed our lives and realigned our reality. September 11th retooled our priorities and reshaped our faith. I wish I could say it had done all of these things for the better. But sadly, you and I know that this is not the case. No, it seems that in the 10 years past, the events of September 11th did not retool or reshape us for the better. Not for the hunker down and pull everyone together, adversity makes us stronger sort of better. But for the worse, for the hunker down and push others apart, adversity makes us bitter sort of better. And that is worse, indeed. Our fear of the other supplanted faith in one another, and fear of their God supplanted faith in our one common God. Allah is God. Let me say that again. Allah is God. One last time so that we hear it and know it before our fear blocks the fact from our brains. Allah is God. When fear pervades us, co commonality evades us. God have mercy. God have grace. Ten years on, we are still a nation wounded in our hearts warring in our world, timid in our generosity, and terrorized in our imaginations. When we react out of fear, we cannot respond out of faith. Ten years on, we are still a nation burning down mosques, burdening our troops, banning community centers, and bludgeoning our economy. When we react out of hate, we cannot respond out of mercy. Ten years on, we are still a nation racially profiling our enemies, subdividing our constituencies, demoralizing our detainees, undermining our democracy. When we react out of ignorance, we can't respond out of wisdom. God, have mercy. God, have grace.
Jesus said, love your enemies. Carry his pack and tend to his wounds. America tends to say, hate your enemies. Shoot his body, bomb his village. Jesus said, serve the poor, feed the hungry, but America says, serve yourselves. Go shopping. In the temple of God, Jesus turned the tables of the powerful upside down. In the temple of democracy, the powerful turned the tables of our lives upside down. Jesus insisted on breaking the hold of the rich while they insist on tax breaks for the rich. Now, with this, we have always struggled, always wrestled, always strained. But with 9-11, our struggle deepened, our wrestling heightened, and our strain worsened. God, have mercy. God, have grace. And so on this day, 10 years on, we find ourselves suspended between memories of the past and hopes for our present and future. On this day, here in this suspended reality, we have choices to make, people of God. We can heed the words of the psalmist or not. We can continue to put our trust in princes or we can put our trust in God. Will we put our faith in fear-filled words or listen for a faith-filled word? Will we bask in, self, in self-righteousness or will we bathe in the grace of our baptism? Will we be people of the bomb? Or will we be people of the book? Will we build bigger fences? Or will we build a bigger table? People of God, you must decide. You must choose. God, have mercy. God, have grace. Amen.